Hey, welcome back to another episode of Real Life Fisherman. It's a how-to video. We're gonna go over our uh, VHF radio I got for my birthday, Lorance Link 6S. We're gonna go over all the stuff you need to know to install a VHF radio. Some of the just details uh, you wanna know before you purchase your radio. One of them being, is it a GPS unit or not? This is a GPS unit. It has its own internal GPS built into it. You can also get them where you can hook it to your fish finder and uh, use your fish finder chop plotter as a uh, as its GPS fix. That one you'll need to have a power cable hooked up with a uh, with a NEMA uh, 0183 and connect it that way. That way it can talk to your fish finder and use its location as a GPS fix. But this one has a built-in one. If you are getting a built-in one, you do want to make sure you have it out on your dash somewhere where it's going to pick up a good GPS signal if you're planning on using it that way. Um, if you're going to flush mount it or mount it under your dash, I suggest you can go with the, uh, the NEMA 0183 connection method. That way if you're getting a good um, signal for your GPS in case you ever have to hit the distress button. So this is your distress button. All of them will come with that, lift that up, and you press press the red button. Only in emergency is when you press the red button. Most of them will have a built-in automatic 16 or nine for uh, mayday calls on 16. That's pretty much it. I mean, you do have, like I was saying, the option with this right here. This is your uh, NEMA 0183 connection. So if you're gonna hook this to your fish finder, Make sure your fish finder has these wires coming off of it. That way it can use your uh, in internal GPS from your fish finder instead of using its own. Once you hook this up, it's using your fish finder. If you don't hook this up, it's using this if it has internal GPS. If you set up your uh, MMSI number, that's a number you need to go on a website, get that from the Coast Guard. There's a couple websites you can get that from. That's registered with the Coast Guard. You put in your vessel information, your information, and it's assigned to that radio. So once you put that number into that radio, it is locked into there. That cannot be changed unless it is sent back to the factory to be wiped. So it's a one-time deal. So when you do go to enter that number in, make sure you do it slowly and check it at the end to make sure it's all entered correctly. I'll go over that later in the video, but that's, that's something you need to do also before you start your installation that way when you hit your distress button it sends your gps information and your boat's information and your information to everybody within range of you and also the coast guard and the other thing is the uh, the antenna the antenna on these is almost as important if not more important than the actual quality of the fish finder itself you want to make sure you get a good antenna i'm not an expert on this by any means there's guys out there that specialize in this kind of thing but basically to get a better signal you're going to have more wraps on your uh your antenna the more wraps the tighter the wraps the better your signal is going to be the taller your antenna is the better it's it's a you know range issue of course the taller the better the more wraps the better also your connection is something you're going to want to figure out before you start so there's a, a few different kind of connectors. You have the, uh, the screw-in style connector here. So this is the one that comes on this particular radio. If you don't want to mess with anything, it's already pre-done pre for you. It just screws in the back right there like that. And then that'll screw in the back of your radio. If you want to custom fit yours like I will, you'll have to cut this end off. It's not going to go through. This end won't go through my, my grommet that I got. So it also won't go back through. I like to have my uh, cable come out of the bottom. This won't be able to fit back through there. It comes factory out of the side. So I pop that out and then there's a rubber grommet that'll fill that. And then this is gonna come out the bottom of my base. It's a cleaner look where I'm putting it through there. Also the, the base, is a stainless steel. If you're gonna go with an eight foot antenna, you better get a stainless steel heavy duty base. They also have different styles, styles that go uh, clamp on your rail. If you have bow rails, 
and you don't want to drill through your boat, you can clamp this to your bow rail with a different bracket set up, but I'm gonna, you know, hard mount this to, to the boat. So, okay, that, that's pretty much it. Uh, oh, the other two connectors. I didn't, I didn't go with the other two connectors. This is the connector I'm gonna be using. This is a soldered in connector. So I'm gonna have to uh, strip back this cable and uh, sh I'll go over all that and I'll show you how to solder that connection. And then uh, there's another one that's called a crimp on. It actually has some like uh, gold little teeth that you crimp down, it bites through the cable, makes the connection that way. I wouldn't recommend that way. I don't think that way gets a good enough uh, signal, either the screw on style, which this one came with, or uh, the best connection in my opinion is the solder method, which is what we're gonna do today. All right, check it out. Okay, so you're gonna wanna figure out what side of the boat you're gonna mount this on. You can mount it anywhere you want on your boat. You do want to keep a couple things in mind. One, what's underneath, where you're drilling, always keep that in mind anytime you're drilling in a boat, obviously. You don't wanna block any navigation light or anything like that. You also wanna make sure you're not real close to your, your radio unit. You wanna be at least a couple feet away from your radio unit, two to three feet um, or more. That way you're not getting any interference from the antenna itself to the radio. Also making your cable as short as you can also helps uh, with your signal. So, you know, cut it to, to length this you know, what I'm getting at is what I do. I'm gonna mount it here. We're gonna go through here uh, with a grommet. That stainless steel grommet, we're gonna come right through there. It'll be good. On this side, it'll be easier for me, especially like in the Delta, there's some areas where there's low bridges. I'll be able to just open my window here, flip the lever up like this, and then uh, be able to just lay the antenna down really quickly to go underneath the bridge. So I'm, I'm gonna mount it here on this side out of the way, the uh, the light will still be visible and uh, it'll be out of the way pretty much of the cleat as best as possible. This is where we're gonna go. I've already marked the holes, so uh, we can start drilling. Dog. You want to use stainless steel hardware, quarter 20 hardware with the uh, tapered, no, hard to see there, tapered head, the oval head, like that, and anti seize, just in case. bolting this stuff uh, if you can't reach it obviously you need uh, somebody to come help you hopefully you got a buddy around or you can go bother your wife or something <laughs> very good very good don't forget to put this in bungee cord over that because the rod holder but I mean you probably get it to come out and around it like this if it came down like that. So that would be now clips I actually have a clip if you wanted to you could put a clip right here to hold it
tell whether I like it or not. I gotta have enough room here for it to come up. I mean, that's the only thing with this mounting here. Uh, I mean, sometimes I mean I could mount it here, but the cord's coming off this side instead of this side. Some radios that come off this side, some that come off this side. So you kind of got to figure out how it's going to work best for you. I mean, you'll have to come around the back with the cord. Otherwise they lay on your switches or your gauges or I don't think it'll, I don't think it'll interfere much. I'm going to say with it right there. Yeah. Here you can bump it too, going up for the anchor. try to cut long enough so that you can solder outside of the boat in case uh, any solder drips and you don't get it inside the boat that's bad so you want to measure and cut three quarters here back from the edge Make mark. then you gotta fold the uh, braided Jacket back over the end. Okay. So you're gonna go five eighths from the tip back to and cut that back, and you'll leave an eighth of an inch of this white coated cover here. So make it easy on yourself. Burn it like that. Five eighths. stuff on first is what I should have done. This is kind of the trickiest part of the whole deal. And the little metal washer slides down. Then the Teflon washer. This is where you're gonna solder. You're gonna solder here, the tip right there. And then inside here, you're gonna put a little bit of solder around where that uh, braided wire was there. Careful when soldering. Okay. And uh, just cut this end flush right here after you soldered it. A little file. There. And there we go. That is the finished end. Alright. And this goes into the back of the radio. There we go. Now I can see what I'm doing. Yeah. All you're doing under here is hooking it up to a negative bus bar or terminal and then a the positive either on the fuse block or 
a breaker or a switch. Either any of those will work. Something happening. Aha. Okay. Now we're to my favorite part of all installs. And it's kind of weird, but it's this. I love doing that. On fish binders, anything, screens. I love pulling a little plastic protector off. I don't know, I get a thrill like that. <laughs> I don't know why. You have to do it at the very end of the job, right when it's all done. So uh, now we're just gonna go through the, the setup mode. So yeah, we're gonna, uh, let's say, uh, this is the, yes, we're in the US, Canada. What's gonna be yes? Okay, now this is where you gotta enter in your uh, MMSI number. Stress channel, it'll immediately go there. Track buddy. Huh. We'll have to figure all that out. I guess you can like basically call people. Like if Ken was out there fishing when we were fishing together, we can set it up and then just have our own little call. Ah, cool. Now just like any new toy. It's gonna be uh, a lot of playing with it, you know? I've installed plenty of these things, but I haven't got to play with too many of them, you know? This will be my first one in my own boat, so I'm gonna have a lot of fun trying to figure out how it all works and get it all set up right. And, and uh, you know, it'll be a lot safer for us out there on the uh, bay and in the ocean. Really shouldn't have been going out there without it. It's kind of stupid. Uh, I know better. It's one of those things, you wanna go fishing, you're just gonna go but uh, definitely you want to have this if you're going out the salt water out to the bay anytime you're out on a boat really I mean they're good to have and you can talk to your buddies out there fishing too you know be like wicked tuna I'm hooked up I'm hooked up and then I'll be us I'll be like hey Ken I'm hooked up I'm hooked up <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you learned something. Or if you had any questions uh, and I didn't go over it, give me a, a comment and let me know. I'll try to answer any questions I get. Um, I always try to answer all the questions uh, and uh, to the best of my ability. So if you have any questions, let me know. And if this helped you out, uh, please like and subscribe and uh, keep these videos coming. Thanks.